and it alternates between the, in this model, the blue elements are the apartments, the orange elements are the studios, and it's a, a tower, a system of little towers, six-story towers that alternate between these different uses. But it produces a monolithic whole by the shared curves of each one of these typologies. So if you look at the unit plans, every one of the units is a little bit different. The space in between the units. Sorry, the computer's a little slow. The space in between units is also unique. So you see these four different towers that then connect with four different studio spaces, and then they surround and produce a central atrium, which is the kind of collective space. So here there are three levels of hierarchy. There's the hierarchy of the apartment plans, which then produce at a second level of hierarchy the studios, which then produce as a third level of hierarchy the central space. So instead of coming up with an ideal form, like a sphere, and putting a sphere inside a cube, let's say, I went back and thought hierarchy is a good thing when the hierarchy is working through a calculus-based system with feedback. So each one of these systems is feeding back on the other to produce a whole which has distinct parts but is completely unified into a single continuous geometry. So and this is just working your way up kind of floor by floor. And, you know, in the elevations as well. But so these curves, instead of using ideal geometries to provide order, I'm using curvature to provide order. So the main organization of the building is this system of curves that unite all of the components, which typically architects have thought of curves as being expressionist devices, where you organize with platonic geometry and express with curvature. This project, I'm working it the other way. And this kind of, this will unfold at a bigger scale. Okay, so this idea of disparate elements uniting to produce a larger scale organization. For the World Trade Center Ground Zero site design, I teamed up with uh, four other architects and one media designer. Uh, we formed this group called United Architects. It's um, UN Studio, Riser Umamoto, Foreign Office Architects, Kevin Kennan Architects, and then Imaginary Forces, which is a motion graphics movie title company in LA. We formed this coalition, United Architects, to do the World Trade Center project, and we're now we're basically trying to do a tower together. We've entered four or five different competitions for towers since the World Trade Center. But we try to integrate the media knowledge of imaginary forces with our shared kind of architectural vision of vertical buildings and public spaces. But in this project, we try to unite the memorial on Ground Zero with the master plan of the transportation network with five vertical towers. And this image of looking up from the memorial into a ring of connected towers was, the, was our agenda. And equally to move public space off the street vertically into a dense organization of vertical buildings was also the agenda. But here, again, instead of starting with one system, we started with three. The first is the transportation network underground. The second were the two footprints, which we connected with a ramp into a memorial site. And then the third was this network of towers that connected up to form this ramp uh, with these void spaces that were, um, you know, kind of like uh, cathedral arches or gothic arches in the end. So here you see those five towers connected up looking from the ground level. And all of them connected at the 60th to 65th floor. And we were talking about this diagram mm. earlier today, but with the Ground Zero competition, there was a, 
was called a corporation, but it was a federally subsidized entity that was running the, the competition. And our argument was that New York was not a city, a, a social city of homogeneous fabric punctuated by state monuments like cathedrals. Um, it was a capitalist skyline of the grid where the grid gave everyone a freedom to express themselves and every tower was a celebration in and of itself and none of them connected to produce anything bigger than themselves. And we were saying that the Ground Zero site was an opportunity for a federal and state plan to force five of these towers to bend together and connect to produce a new kind of structure on the skyline and to produce a new kind of fabric in the city. So, and that's where we use this term social capital, which you know, we borrowed from urban planning to describe the, the value of public-private partnerships to produce developments which are more valuable in a larger urban context than they are as freestanding buildings. So, you know, and this is the, you know, the concentrated skyline element was one aspect. The other was trying to solve what, what's been an architectural proposal for the last 15 or 20 years, which is to build a slope tower. And in Philip Johnson's <coughs> MVRDVs, Zaha Hadid, Foreign Office Architects, Rem Cole House, in the last 10 years especially, most international architects are proposing slope towers. They all had the same problem, which is if you slope a tower, you, you're caught with the problem of a vertical elevator. And this is probably very banal to you, but <laughs> it's impossible to rent a space where the distance from the elevator to the light varies. Every vertical building has exactly the same distance of space. Every time you break that, your tower sits vacant because people can't change floors and they can't work modularly. So this was a kind of return to the module for us. And what we did to solve that is we ran these vertical elevator shafts and braided towers around them, like these spirals you see. So that way our floor plates were always the same and we always had a vertical elevator and we could get the towers to bend and slope and connect diagonally. Um, it also let us run stairs. The escape <coughs> stairs are easy to bend, unlike elevators. So it let us create a matrix of connectivity where instead of the World Trade Center towers that collapsed, which had concentrated circulation, you know, a kind of double version of themselves that are disconnected, we made a much high, more highly communicating structure of stairs and elevators where for every one path you would have in the previous building, we had, I forget what, something like 26 or 27 paths from every single point in the building that you could move. So both the public space and the ability to communicate with that, as well as to rent very large spaces downtown, as well as the safety came out of a more robust system, more highly connected and robust system. And I'd argue this, you know, is only possible to think when you're thinking through calculus-based primitives rather than ideal forms. And if you think ideal forms, you get simple systems of connectivity. If you think more complex holes with variable parts, you get these more robust systems of communication. Okay, and this is just some of the examples of how we connected spaces up. kind of even crazier proposal for the European Central Bank in Frankfurt. We simplified our form to a sphere uh, because we thought that for the European Central Bank they were looking for uh, an image which was completely platonic. So within this platonic whole we generated this variable system and you can see we had a system of six towers that were pinned at three points and they could rotate. And by rotating these elements vertically, we could produce a sphere out of them. So a little bit to be ironic, we just thought, well, we'll show you how we can produce platonic forms out of this calculus-based system as well. 